How's it going everybody? In this video, I want to go ahead and introduce, welcome you to the Layer 2 VPN section of the Service Provider playlist on YouTube. So this has been a kind of a long time coming for me personally, but I'm actually really looking forward to diving into it and getting uh, into, the, into the weeds. So unlike MPLS Layer 3 VPN, we're gonna be we're not gonna be using multi-protocol BGP throughout. There isn't a three or four step process to initially get things up and running and then you run through, you know, 70 different variations of layer three VPN. Layer two VPN is very different in the respect of in the respects of what it's trying to accomplish. So what is MPLS layer two VPN? And first and foremost, let me preface this by saying that when we we're playing around with these technologies, not everything requires MPLS to work. There will be a variety of different variations that we look at that don't require MPLS at all. So we're gonna be taking a look at other things as well. We'll take a look at VXLAN, we'll take a look at OTV, we'll take a look at local bridging, we'll take a look at MPLS layer two VPNs, we'll take a look at a lot of different variations when it comes to taking layer two traffic taking an IP or taking a ping from uh, router one here and sending it over here to router five on the same subnet and how that would come into play. There's gonna be a lot of those things that we're gonna be taking a look at as we progress here. Now I will be starting off with MPLS specifically, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stay with MPLS long term. So my goal is to take the documentation that's available on uh, iOS and iOS XR and walk through a variety of different scenarios regarding it. And we're gonna take a look at a lot of different variations of MPLS layer two VPNs. And the, the ones that uh, are explicitly defined on the service provider blueprint and ones that are more like, if I turn this feature on and this feature off, how does that affect things? We're gonna be looking at a lot of debugs, a lot of Wireshark captures and things like that to help you understand exactly what's going on. Because at the end of the day, that's what you really care about. You wanna know what's going on. So initially what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go through and set up all the routing. So we're gonna get OSPF running, we're gonna go in and get um, LDP running so that we can have the connectivity between all of the devices and things like that. Because once we have those pieces in play, that will allow us to scale out much, much greater as we're going along. Now, for those of you that are interested in learning about how multiple different types of pseudo wires come into play and all those values and techniques, we're gonna be taking a look at those as we progress. So we'll be taking a look at a single pseudo wire, backup pseudo wires, so on and so forth, X connects, all that fun stuff. We're gonna be taking a look at the older version of layer two VPN, so L2 VFI, and then we'll take a look at the the new constructs as well. So um, that's my plan as we're progressing through here because of the fact of all the different variations that come into play with it. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into getting the base up and running and all that type of stuff. And we'll go from there. So first things first, we're gonna go from R1 to XR18. That This is all our service writer core, we're gonna get all that up and running and operational. So simple way to do this for us here is gonna be just enabling OSPF and LDP on everything 10.0.0.0 slash eight, meaning anything inside of the 10 network. So router OSPF one, type in network of 10.0.0.0, 0 0.255.255.255 area zero, MPLS, LDP autoconfig, and that's pretty much it. Do show history, and we're gonna grab these few lines of config, and we're gonna dump them onto CSR2, CSR3, CSR4, CSR5, CSR6, CSR7, and then CSR8, and that'll be that. Now, in order to get this running on XR, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna log in, show 
Log in with the right password. Show IP interface brief. We're gonna go to uh, enable OSPF on everything. So we're gonna go to router, or let's do MPLS LDP auto or LDP log neighbor. And then we're gonna type in uh, router OSPF one area zero interface gig zero 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 gig one gig two gig three gig four gig five and uh, we'll do interface loopback zero and commit so that'll be that then we're gonna go to XR10 do the same thing log in go to global config MPLS LDP log neighbor and then we're gonna go to router OSPF one area zero and then on XR10 it's gonna be interface gig zero oops forget this slash and gig zero one interface loopback zero and then MPLS LDP auto config I actually forgot to do that on the other router let's do this real quick Let's go up here and MPLS LDP auto config. I forgot to do that there. Um, so LDP is popping up right away. We'll go to XR11, log in, go to global config, MPLS LDP, log neighbor, router OSPF1, area zero, interface gig zero 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 gig one, interface loopback zero, and then MPLS LDP auto config. Go ahead and commit that. And then on 18, the same process. Go to global, Rob and Cisco, MPLS LDP, log neighbor, router OSPF one, area zero, interface gig zero, 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 Gig one and then interface loopback zero, MPLS LD auto config, commit. All right, so all that's done. Our connectivity should be up and running, and then once it is, we will be able to start diving into the specifics of the operations. So it'll be pretty straightforward. We're going to start off with the easy stuff. We're going to start off with local bridging, where we go in and we allow, say, R2 and R3 to talk through CSR3, and then we'll move into more and more complicated setups and things like that and uh, we'll start off with a single pseudo wire to join a couple connections together and then we will start scaling it up more and more and more we'll talk about the different signaling mechanisms and how that comes into, uh, into play and then eventually we'll move into things like vpls and then we'll talk about bgp auto discovery with both bgp and ldp signaling and then we'll get into like hi hierarchical vpls so on and so forth so, and then we'll dive into things like PBB, EBPN, and how that comes into play, and all the good stuff that goes along with that. So it's gonna be a pretty action-packed setup as we're going along here. And once I have the intra-AS portion of it done, I'll move into the inter-AS portions, like I did with MPLS Layer 3 VPN, and then we'll focus on things like carrier support and carrier, and go from there, and then I'll once I've got all of layer two VPN done, I'll flip back and I'll focus on the multicast VPN, or I'll probably go traffic engineering after this, and then I'll go to multicast VPN, and then I'll bring traffic engineering in on top of it, because it changes the, the dynamic of how things work. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and hanging out with me, and until next time, guys, take it easy.